You're listening to Thrive, where every week we have meaningful conversations with incredible women like you, packed with practical tips and sisterly advice to bring you from a life of simply surviving to thriving. It's personal development for the everyday gal who is done with coasting through her days, done with feeling like she's missing out on the deeper meaning of her own life, and done with mediocrity once and for all. Because it's not enough to simply survive, you deserve to thrive. I'm your host, Erica Gwynn, and I'm ready to thrive together. Here's today's episode. If we're friends on any other fun platform besides the podcast, maybe you also read my blog or follow along on Instagram or you're a girly in our Facebook group, whatever, you probably know that besides sharing encouragement on going from a life of surviving to thriving, I also love, love, love sharing fun clothes that don't break the bank and things that make you feel like a million bucks, whether that's for a date night out or preschool pickup. But for as many outfit ideas or styling tips as we've talked elsewhere, we have never chatted a personal style on Thrive. And that changes today. Carrie Blair is the creator and CEO of The Style Studio by Carrie Blair. She is all about helping women tap into their true potential and create a look on the outside that really reflects who they are on the inside. She's got over 20 years of experience styling executives and high profile clients. She's been dubbed the secret weapon and she's here on Thrive Today to walk us through how to actually uncover your own personal style and add or subtract from your closet accordingly. We also chat about what the word flattering really means, what colors you should actually be wearing, and putting together your own go-to outfit formula for those days when you just don't know what to wear. Stay tuned through this episode. Drop it five stars if you like what you're listening to. And now, welcome, Carrie. Thank you. It's so great to be with you. I know. I'm so excited for this episode because I feel like we've already just hit it off and we've said that for as long as Thrive has been in existence and for as long as I have shared style things on my blog and Instagram and in all the places, we have literally never done a personal style episode on the podcast, which feels like a sin. So I'm so happy that you're here today. (laughs) I'm so glad to be able to like complete that circle, right? For sure. For sure. And what I love so much about you right off the bat is you're not about telling people what they should wear or just like following TikTok trends or copy and pasting a a catwalk look to your own closet. You're kind of like the opposite of that. You're like all about helping women find their own personal style, what Mm -hmm. looks and feels best for you so that you can show up more authentically, more comfortably in your own skin and in your own clothes. And I think that that is super cool. Where did that come from and start for you? Have you always loved clothes and style? I feel like I feel like we're probably kindred spirits where this has kind of always been your jam. Well, first of all, I love that you get that about me. So that's really important because I'm not about the latest trends and dressing like your friends and um, wearing the exact same thing that everybody's wearing. I'm about what is who are you and what's your personal style and bringing the essence of who you are on the inside to the outside. And I love that you think I've always been this way because I have not. Oh, so, I love it. That's even better. <laughs> so, I mean, definitely not growing up. I struggled a lot with style and image. And um, so that might be where it first started. But really, so I was in, I'll just give you a little bit of my background, which was I was in corporate sales in my early 20s and I got burned out. And so I just went and got a job at Neiman Marcus. And I was like, oh, I'll just work here for a little while, make money, have fun. And um, so I did that. And then I would stop and I would go back into the corporate world. And then I would get burned out and I would go work at Nordstrom. (laughs) So, And um, I also, a fun fact about me, I also led personal development seminars for people, for thousands of people over 10 years. And so I kind of took that, I kind of took that personal development Uh, what I learned about people. And then what I saw when I was working at Neiman's and Nordstrom, I saw so many people not, they didn't feel good about themselves and they didn't feel good about the way that they looked and they didn't know what to do about it. So they're wandering the mall, going in stores, hoping someone can help them, but they couldn't, right? So I started to have this epiphany and I was like, wait a minute. 
if people were less focused on how they looked and they it, that was just a given and they felt unbelievable on the inside, they could accomplish anything. So once I had that epiphany, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to help people. I have to design a way to work with people, to empower them, to feel their best self um, so that they could make more money or meet the love of their life or accomplish any of their big goals. And that's what I did. And it's been over 20 years. Can you believe that? That's awesome. I, I love know. that. So what are some of like the biggest misconceptions around personal style? that you've seen? Like, what is it? What does that mean to you when you're like, what is your personal style? Cause some people might be like, huh? I have no idea what my style is. I just That's throw on people. whatever's clean and sm yeah. if it smells clean, we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I think most people don't even consider personal style. Like you're saying, it's more about, uh, just putting clothes on or surviving that portion. Like they don't know what to wear. They don't know how to wear it. So I'm just putting clothes on. So I like to take it as being more strategic. So we all know first impressions matter, right? And these days, the studies are showing that you get three seconds to make a first impression. So you can't even no smile. Pressure. No, no pressure. pressure. Yeah. yeah. You can't even like smile, shake a hand. I mean, nothing. And so given that, most people know this and do nothing about it, Right which is scary. So for me, if you're someone who has big goals in life and that it is important to you, if you can take control of that first impression, it can change your life because then you're telling people what you want them to know about you in that initial meeting, instead of what they're already making up about you. Does that make sense? Totally. So can I give you an example, which Please is really do. Funny? Okay. Yes, this is really absolutely. funny. Absolutely. I use this example often. Okay, so um, let's pretend that you're at an event. So back in the day, it was networking events, but maybe you're at a party, <laughs> whatever. And you're at an event and from across the room, you see this guy and he's short, he's bald, he's portly and has glasses. And you think, oh, I mean, you, you don't really think about him much, right? And you move on with your evening. And then at the end of the evening, your best friend comes up to you and she's like, hey, I need you. I want you to meet my friend, Steve. And it's this guy. And you're like, okay. And you meet Steve and he turns out to be the funniest guy you've ever met. Like you have so much fun. You have the best conversation. You're like new BFFs. It's like amazing, right? But the problem is, is that Steve wasn't taking control over his first impression. So you would have never met him. So he's turning away opportunities to meet great people or great, great opportunities because he wasn't taking control of how he looked. Now, I mean, there's some things you can't do anything about, right? Like if you're bald. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe a bad example. Just gotta but, own that one. <laughs> right. But, but there are things that you can do with like color and fabric and the way you dress your body and and owning it, that really can make a monumental difference in your life, which I see your um, blog, you, you get it, right? You oh, get you. how to dress your best so that you're accentuating your positive assets. Well, and granted, I feel like that also ties into a misconception around personal style, because I think People might be quick to poo-poo something if they're like, oh, it's just, that's so superficial. Or like, I want people to see me for my soul or see me for who I am instead of what's on the surface. But the truth mm -hmm. of the matter is like what you said, like science is science. And scientifically, we all know how many people we pass on any given day. And most of them, you're probably not giving a second thought to for whatever reason. And it might not be because of what they're wearing, but it might also just be a totally subconscious thing where like they're, what they're wearing didn't help them notice you anymore or help them get noticed by you anymore. So yeah. for and it's, like, yeah. And it's even deeper than that because uh, how you look impacts how you feel and your sure. confidence level. For sure. So if your confidence level is low, then how the heck are you ever going to 
um, shine for that person to see you. So if you're just smelling your clothes to see if they're clean to put them on, using your example, right? Yeah. Then you're not really going to nail it. And, and people oh aren't going to be attracted to you. It's so timely too. I mean, granted, by the time this episode comes out, this will be old news. But what everyone does not know is what I'm posting live on Instagram today <laughs> is a real. And it's, um, I basically took like, okay, in pregnancy, especially as pregnant as I currently am, I'm currently 35 weeks pregnant while we're having this little chit chat. And I feel like it can be so easy to just throw on sweatpants and just throw on whatever is the biggest, yeah. baggiest, most oversized thing that will fit for comfort. And granted, it is super comfortable. And some days I want that. I need that. It's fine. But I would be completely lying if I didn't say that uh, some days I just don't want to feel like frumpy and I'm already mm -hmm. uncomfortable in my body the way it is with it changing so much and being so different. Like some days I wake up and I'm like, you know what? I just want to feel like myself again. And I want to feel right. pretty and put together and whatever. So I literally put together a little Instagram reel being like, all right, pregnant mamas, if you are just in a rut of throwing on the sweats and calling it a day and you want to feel a little bit different, here's like a couple quick outfit formulas that you can put on that will still be super it. comfortable for your changing body and will still, but they just make you, will, will make you feel a little bit better and will make you feel like, oh, I feel good. I feel pretty. I feel like yes. on top of, on top of my life for a moment. <laughs> I love that you said that. So I have a 10 year old, almost 11. And I remember being pregnant, even though it was a long time ago. And um, one thing that I did when I was pregnant is I made sure to buy myself a few new pieces of clothing every three months. So smart. Great pieces of clothing, like ones that made me feel beautiful and alive. And because your body changes and it's not always awesome right? It's not yep. always like, Ooh, this is amazing. God bless those women that have that. I wasn't one of them, right? Me neither. <laughs> so I needed a boost from clothes. So every three months, and I have dressed clients through their pregnancies. I think it's so important to, as your body changes, reward it and like make yourself feel amazing. And then yeah. to just continue on that for a minute. Um, it saddens me how many pregnant moms, but also brand new moms don't take care of themselves. They mm -hmm. don't take showers every day. They stop putting on makeup. They stop doing their hair. And that's the worst thing you could do. I mean, what a beautiful time of life. Like you're producing a miracle, right? <laughs> and even as a new mom, so I always swore I was never going to go a day without doing my hair and my makeup. And that little thing, doesn't take long. Made me feel amazing throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's so true. What are your, for, for whether you're pregnant or not okay. at the core here, what are some of the best ways to actually go about uncovering your style or maybe developing one? If you don't feel like you are the most style savvy gal and you are just over here sniffing for what's clean. Cause no judgment, right? Like if we no. want to, but if we want to, if we want to up level a little bit, and go from surviving to thriving in our closets and in our styles. Yeah. What's kind of like the the way to do it, according to Carrie? I love that you said that because it is, there isn't any judgment. If it works for you to walk into your closet and not feel great about yourself every day, then do it. Like, who am I to judge you, right? But for me, it is about thriving in life. So it's way deeper. So um how, so this conversation really is for people who want to achieve more. They have goals or they want to feel better about themselves. That's what's important to me. So how you would start that is, first of all, um, I work with people, how I begin is really working on your first impression, which we kind of alluded to. So take a moment to sit down and make a list of what you want people to know about who you are. So that's important. So it's, some people think, well, I just need to go buy new clothes. Yeah, but then you're still being haphazard about it, right? You're still not taking control of your first impression. So if you actually sit down and write out what you want people to know about you, and by the way, this is the hardest question I ask people because most people have never considered it, right? 
-hmm. So, but once you can, and it's kind of like branding yourself, like you would brand a company, right? And um, so if you can sit down and write out what are three to five adjectives that you want people to know about you, then you can start to curate your look. So once you do that, then the next step is to actually go into your closet and see what doesn't match that and be willing to let it go. And again, to go back to what you said, let it go in order to thrive. So it, this isn't about just surviving. You know, I just read, um, sorry, I'm going to go on a little tangent. I just read this article from a major publication um, on Monday and kind of got my blood boiling a little bit because it was all about, um, it was fashion article. And it was all about like, how do you get ready? How do you sleep longer and be able to go from waking up to out the door in 10 minutes? This was an article for women. And I was, and I was like, really? That's what we're going to do? We're going to talk about how to give up and not look like you've given up? Because that's essentially what they were saying is like how to have a couple outfits on standby so that you don't have to put any effort in and you can just fly out the door and maybe throw a little mascara on. But that never makes anybody feel good, right? And we're about empowering women to be our best selves. So that's why that article just kind of fumed me a little bit because you <laughs> should be able to look in the mirror and feel gorgeous. And leave your house because then imagine what's possible for you that day, right? And I'm sure with all the things that you're doing with your podcast and your blog and, and your Instagram and everything that you're doing is about empowering women to thrive. And so that means you have to feel your best. And I'm sure you notice it like on days where, especially being as pregnant as you are, I'm sure you notice it like days where you're like, okay going to be all that I can do to get to this computer today versus like those days where you're feel amazing for your photo well, shoots. <laughs> for sure. And I think that there's, I think that we can all, we've all had those moments of seeing the difference where if you just, even if you're not going from like pajamas to a full put together fancy schmancy outfit every day, full hair, makeup, glam, the whole nine yards, even if you're just putting in some effort that yeah. makes you feel like you put effort in yourself for a specific end result, I think th even just a small shift like that can still make such a big difference where you just feel a little bit more put together. And like you said, it carries over into everything where then it affects how you show up, what sort of things you accomplish, how you think about yourself, how you act towards other people. Yeah. Even just like doing things for the state of, you know, you know what will make you feel more joyful. And then when you are in that state of feeling more joyful, you're now bringing more joy into everything that you touch the rest of the day, whether that's work for your yeah. job or whether that's people that you meet or the barista at Starbucks, like it does have yeah. a ripple effect. So if anyone doesn't, I mean, I think we can all, I think we're all on the same page here that like, we know, oh my gosh. you know, yes. like, you know, that dress that like you put on and it makes you just instantly feel good. Or like that lipstick yeah. that always does it for you or just whatever right. the thing might be where you're just like, that's it. I know that's like my thing and it's going to bring me joy and it's going to make me feel like a million bucks. And it takes like literally zero effort if we're being honest. So right. just do it. <laughs> and even if it's, I love what you said, because it's not about getting dressed up every day. It could be great athleisure wear. It could be great workout wear instead oh, yeah. of wearing your sweatpants. It doesn't have to be something super expensive or some, some, you know, designer thing. It can be something that's, um, like some great athleta plants and a cute t-shirt with puffed sleeves. I mean, you can look super cute at any level and feel amazing. And you're right. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. It Once you do the work, which does take a little bit of time um, to have things in your closet that you love, then it takes an extra five minutes in the morning. If you get dressed and you don't feel amazing when you look in the mirror or you don't look alive, yeah, look at your makeup. Can you throw on that great lipstick or change your shirt, but don't give up. That's my message. Don't give up ladies. Like <laughs> take control of this because you can achieve anything if you, um, empower yourself with your image. Yeah. 
So in going back to when you were mentioning first impressions and picking out three to five words specifically that you're kind of going through and assessing and thinking, okay, does this, does this fit X vibe or word or whatever, where do you kind of see the line between curating things based off of that versus going off of the old, what brings you joy or like, where do sentimental pieces fit in there? If at all, like that sort of how much is kind of crafting it with that in mind versus thinking of, you know, the, the practicality of what your lifestyle or just where, what stage of life you're in might entail. Yeah. How do you kind of like mi- I love your match question. it? And yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I you love your question. <laughs> so if you're designing your first impression, right. With those three to five adjectives, they should bring you joy because it's who you are. This yeah. isn't some fictitious person. This is you on the inside that all we want to do is bring who you are on the inside to the outside. So coming up with these adjectives is just a vehicle to get us there, right? So when you put things on, when you're curating your wardrobe, you should look and see what brings you joy. And, and If it brings you joy, chances are it's matching that first impression because that's who you are, right? Then when it comes to sentimental things, that's a hard one. And it's, uh, I don't mess with people's sentimental things. When I'm editing people's closets, when I'm working with clients, I never, and I tell them that I'm not going to mess with it. If it doesn't match your brand, I don't recommend you wear it, but there are lots of things in my closet that I don't wear that bring me tons of joy. So maybe it's a purse that I bought that I no longer want to wear, but I love looking at it. So I'll display it in my closet or um, maybe there's a dress that I bought that I love the color, but I'm not going to wear it. So you can have things um, that mean something to you without putting them on your body. I would say, gosh, there's so many different things I could For say sure. about this. But one thing is, is um, people end up keeping a lot of things in their closets that other people buy for them, mm-hmm. which you feel that's, guilty about giving it up. Feel so guilty. Like what if they come over and they notice that you don't have it? Well, I don't know that I've ever gone to someone's house and noticed a gift that I gave them. <laughs> and, and whether it's there and they're wearing it or not. Um, so that's a tricky thing. And sometimes you have to, um, you have to coach the people in your life to stop buying you clothes. If the clothes aren't serving you, you have to let them know, listen, I'm really interested in building my personal style. So I'm going to do that. No offense. You can do <laughs> it with love. So, um, but one thing that I, another thing I really recommend when people are going through their closets after you're creating your personal brand is as women, our bodies change, don't they? <laughs> they sure do. <laughs> they sure do. At every stage of life, our bodies change and we keep things in our closet that don't fit our body anymore. Mm. And it's time to get rid of those things. And the number one thing I hear from women is, um, but w- I'll fit into it again. And my my thing that I always say back is, but when you fit into it again, won't you want something new to show off your new figure? You're not going to want to go back to that old thing, right? I mean, you can relate to this being pregnant. As soon as you have this baby, a month or two later, when your body's recovered, you're going to want to go buy something awesome, aren't you? For sure. To show off this new figure you have. The- <laughs> that this human's outside of you now. So you're not going to want to go back to what you had, not saying that you won't wear some of the clothes that you once did, because you will, but you're going to want something new and fresh and makes you feel alive again. Plus, you just don't know how much time is going to elapse. And it's like, it right? could be, you're, we don't want to put pressure on ourselves to like hit a certain size by a certain point or whatever. Like, I, don't, I couldn't even tell you the last time I willingly weighed myself. So I'm like, I'm about to just keep going into my closet and randomly trying on the same thing to be like, is today the day it fits? Like, no, I want to know that everything around me 
will fit me and make me feel fabulous because the last thing I want is to think of a piece and be like, Ooh, I haven't worn that in a while. Let me pull that out only to pull it out and be like, Oh, the last time it fit me was like five years ago in call it. I don't even know what, like, you know, it's just, you don't. Yeah. And it makes you you feel bad. And right. Yeah. And women do it all the time. They leave their skinny jeans or things that used to fit as quote unquote inspiration, except for it's not inspiration. It's a way you punish yourself every yeah, single day because yeah, you walk into your closet and you go, I'm too fat for that. That doesn't look good on me. And so you start your day off in this diminished mental state. And there's so much we do to try to lift ourselves up, like listen to podcasts like yours read blogs, meditate, any, whatever you do to lift yourself up in the morning. And then you go into your closet and you're instantly deflated. Yeah. So you can change that so that when you go into your closet, you actually, um, feel amazing about yourself and are empowered by your day. And that's my, that's really my mission in the world is that women, and I say women because And I work with men, but I love empowering women because I feel like we can do so much more in life. Like we have so much to give and to offer the world. And if we're not focused um, on what's wrong with us, but rather what's right about us, we have more to contribute to the world. For sure. Can we talk about the word flattering and what that actually means? Because I feel like this segues into that. We're like- You keep things around just because you want to squeeze into it or whatever. But I see so many folks now, especially on social media, throw out the word flattering. And I feel like it means something different to everybody. But I know my mama raised me where it does not just mean you're throwing on like the tightest, shortest thing that you can possibly grab. Like you're talk to us about kind of the balance that we're looking for here in terms of when you might want to show off an asset versus showing off or just like feeling a certain way or kind of what proportions are involved. Like what does flattering truly mean from Carrie, the style expert? Oh my gosh. This is such a deep question. I don't know if I can answer (laughs) it in a short answer. No pressure. I I have a six week course that transforms how people perceive themselves. And in this course, I spend an hour talking about our bodies and how to flatter your bodies. So I'll try to do a so quick we'll answer. So we'll put the course link in the show okay, notes because it sounds is like really this deep. is the cliff notes. Yeah. Yeah. The cliff note is, the cliff note is, is that, um, oh my gosh. Okay. I'll start here. Most people, if they don't like an aspect of their body, they buy things bigger to hide it, except for that makes you look bigger than you are. Some other people uh, try to buy the tightest things to show off I don't know, their great butt or their chest or what are they, whatever they're showing off, Um, except for that has a certain look as well, right? So it's being true to your first impression, yeah, and getting to know your body on such a level that you you know what's great about it and you know what you want to camouflage and you learn how to do that. That's when you can learn that balance and um, I don't know, really know your body on a deep level, then you will choose things that are flattering. Does that answer your question in a cliff note version? Yeah, it's the cliff notes, but like, that's the truth of it. That is, it's really about like knowing your, your body and yourself on an intimate level like that, where you know, okay, if I want, like, I'll use myself as an example here because I still to this day hate strapless things because Mm. I was never a chesty woman ever, never had cleavage, like nothing. So if I would, if I wear strapless things, it usually just looks like a ridiculous amount of skin on the top half of my body with (laughs) pretty much nothing happening. Like just like, if you would cover me up with your hand, when you're looking, it would be like, Oh, is she wearing clothes? Like there's, (laughs) It's not doing anything for me. It's just something that would make me uncomfortable. I would be tugging, which is like not giving confidence. Uh, So for me, I'm like, all right, strapless things are not really that flattering on me because I, my chest can't even hold them up anyway. (laughs) You're hilarious. 
it's just like little things like that, like knowing what's going to work for your body and then being yeah. able to, on the flip side, if you have incredible, like really big cleavage, strapless also might not work because it, exactly. it, it might not hold up. <laughs> exactly. At all. And then I you think have like seven inches happening. Like it. Yeah. It's, it's, I it's, love that you're saying this. Yeah. And I have two points to what you just said. Point one is great that you know your body. That's number one. Learn what works for your body. Learn what doesn't. But point two is you may not have found the right strapless thing. This is true. Yeah. So staying open, right? So I had um, this client once who also said I can never wear anything strapless or cold shoulder. She didn't even like cold shoulder. She's like, it just doesn't even look good on me. And you then like challenge accepted. I, it, that's always the way I am. I'm like, <laughs> okay, thanks for letting me know. And then um, I got some pieces and she was like, oh my gosh, I look amazing. Yes, you just weren't buying the right ones. So just be, now that stay true to your style. So if you love the look of strapless, but you haven't figured out how to wear it and you think you're, something's wrong with your body that makes it not work, then find the right strapless because I promise you can. But if you don't even like the look, then that's a different story. Then who cares? Does that make yeah. sense? So for I'm sure. constantly... For myself, I'm constantly evolving my style and I'm constantly challenging myself by trying on things that I would have never because I thought they wouldn't look good on me. And sometimes I'm super surprised. I would say that's the number one compliment I get from clients is, oh my gosh, I would have never picked that off the rack. And now it's my favorite peak. It's because sometimes we put ourselves in these tiny little boxes and we need to like expand who we are and what's possible for us in all aspects yeah. of life, right? Absolutely. Well, besides shape and what's flattering from a shape perspective, obviously color also plays a huge part here. Mm-hmm. Give us the lowdown on like power colors, finding your power color, or I'm sure you've heard of like the, the seasonal sort of this, the yeah. thing of like, what season are you based on yeah. your palette? Give us the load on on this here. You're covering everything that I cover in this course. <laughs> oh my gosh. Amazing. <laughs> Which I love because we have a whole module just about color. So my theory about color is color has a vibration to it. And it, um, depending on what the vibration that you want to be at is what color you would wear. Right. Ooh, fun. Which is so, um, so that's what I love about it is you can really, change your look based on, um, the color. And so I don't believe in the traditional getting your colors done. Very controversial of me to say that. And I don't care. I don't believe in it because people are then married to that. I can only wear these 20 colors and I can't wear anything else. And then they trap themselves in this box and they walk around shopping with their color chart and like, Oh, nope, that's not the right shade. But there are millions of colors out there. And I promise if you're one little shade up or down, it could probably work for you. So for me, it's more about what's the impression that you want to make and um, using color to enhance your look. So like for me, I chose to wear a bright pink shirt today because it makes people happy. (laughs) Right. And it brings joy. And that was kind of my vibe this morning is I wanted to be happy and make other people around me happy and bring joy and be available. And so that's one thing that bright pink does if worn correctly. So, um, so there's different power colors based on what's the power you're looking for. Does that make sense? So gone Mm -hmm. are the days of like the wear red, if you want to have power and wear blue if you want to be amicable. Those still relate, but there's so many different shades and everything that um yeah, we just go so deep on this. I that's my quick answer. <laughs> oh, it's it's so funny to have like these quick conversations about something I've spent 20 years on and gone so deep. Like I really want um to make a difference for people. And I would say the biggest thing is just notice what the color does to your skin tone. 
A and notice the vibration that it has. If you're into vibrations, which I am, I think everybody could say power, uh, color has power. Awesome. Okay. So now super curious, do you have a go-to outfit formula or like a sort of uniform that's like your no fail for days when you don't know what to wear or like you truly don't have the mental capacity to go into your closet and pick something out, but you just know already, all right, I know what works. I know what will make me feel a certain way. So like, here's my quick formula or here's my, here's my uniform, so to speak. I do. And I think that's the power of creating your personal style. Because once you create your personal style and your first impression, then you can create those go-to outfits. So for me, yeah. um, my signature style most of the year changes a little bit, but is jeans, a pretty blouse, and a blazer. And you will find me in that most days of the week. And I don't, uh, sometimes I'll throw a dress on when it's in the heat of the summer, but for the most part, this is my signature style and, and everyone knows it. They're like, Carrie will have on jeans and a blazer. <laughs> but again, once you figure out what your signature style is, you can create that based on what fits your body, what fits your personality, what brings you joy, all of those things in combination. How do you recommend kind of experimenting with trends to see how you feel about them and how they might fit into your personal style. If you see some, if you're kind of totally on board with jeans, top and a blazer, but then what happens if like you're on scrolling social media one day and you're seeing this new trending thing and you're like, man, I never would have thought of that. Or it doesn't seem like it goes with my personal style, but I kind of want to try and see how I feel about it. Like, how do you kind of start dabbling in other trends? Yeah. So I wear other things. This is just my signature look. Oh, for sure. Um, for sure. So I, I love trying on different things that I would have never tried on before. So I love when I see a trend that, um, that I like the look of, first of all, that's the number one, don't buy a trend because your friends tell you to, or because everyone's doing it, or it's the latest thing on Instagram. But if it genuinely, you're like, wow, I really like that look then try it on your body. It may work and it may not. Because the the biggest thing is, is people have preconceived notions about trends, right? Like I've had women tell me, my shoulders are wide. I could never wear puff sleeves, which is a huge trend right now. Well, that's not true. It's just which puff sleeves or which ruffles. So once they get the right piece, they can incorporate that trend. So being willing to try different things. So I think that's really important. So try them. You may love them. It may be awesome. And don't, again, I just want to reiterate, don't buy the trends because everyone else is doing it. Stay true to yourself. Yeah. Walk us through kind of uh, any other tips or tricks for once you've got the scoop on your own style, what it is, what it's not, what you already have in your closet, what looks good and feels fabulous on and all that jazz. How do you take that into shopping, whether you're online or offline and really making sure that anything that you add in now in the future kind of aligns with all of the above and really just highlights and complements all of the hard work that you've done to find your personal style. I love it. Okay, so once you design your personal style and then you go through your closet and you edit out anything that isn't your personal style, while you're doing that, a big tip that I have is to notice um, notice the trends in your closet. And I don't mean trends like clothes. I mean, what do you do? Like maybe you just throw out five cardigan sweaters because you don't even like cardigan sweaters, but you've had them because you think you need them. What's going to happen is when you go out shopping, you're probably going to be attracted to cardigan sweaters because it's a bad habit you've had, right? So we have to be willing to break our bad habits. And one way to do that is stay true, A, to be aware of them. That's the first thing. Be aware yeah. of what you tend to gravitate towards. Or if you're someone who, if you really like something, you buy it in five colors. That's a common one. <laughs> right? Because you might never find anything as good. 
Guilty. Um, yeah, everyone is. So <laughs> notice your bad habits and start to break them. And then when you're out shopping, keep with you like on your phone or, you know, wherever, but keep with you what your first impression is that you designed. And then as you're shopping and looking at things, think, does that represent these things? And one way to play around with it before you go shopping, um, I've just started recommending this to people and it's made a difference is to get on Pinterest and just start pinning things. Right. And then step back from it and look like, oh, does this wardrobe look like someone who's sophisticated, successful, whatever your things are? And if it does, then great. Those pieces you should try out. And if it doesn't, then kind of come and go with it, but play it, be willing to play around with it. For sure. Not to put you on the spot, but I feel like this would help people who are love examples are visual like myself. Can we play it? Can we role play a little bit here with like, with, okay, we've got like Amy and she give us like three words and walk us through kind of like, okay, if these are her three words, this is maybe like what should be going on inside her brain when she's in the store, if she needs maybe a dress for an event, or maybe she needs also like an athletic piece or something and kind of give us like three pieces that might feel like they are in different ballparks of life, but all still speak to and represent the three words that she has kind of aligned with as her personal brand vibe style, whatever you want to call it. I love it. I love it. Can we use you as our example? Since you're putting me on the spot, I'm going to put you on the spot. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Okay. So what would be three-ish words to describe who you are? Oh, gosh. Okay. Let's see. I would say bold, Hmm. practical, and also... um, this is so hard because I was always someone who would like go totally different vibes. I I had like eras in my, in my closet. Um, and don't think of your closet. Think of you, like the person you are right now, who are you in three adjectives? Carrie, this is like a lot of pressure all of a sudden that I was unprepared for. You flipped the script. (laughs) I told you it's the hardest question I've ever asked. I know. Oh my gosh. What did I say? Bold, practical. Well, then I don't know if I would do practical then because that feels, I feel like I, this is why I feel like I must need to call my mom and be like, mom, <laughs> who am yeah, I? And sometimes if people can't think of it, I do recommend like just not even necessarily calling people, but think of like, who would your husband say that you are? Or who would your best friend say that you are? Like, who are you at the core of you? It's, this is exactly why you said it's the hardest thing ever. Um, okay. Well, definitely bold. I would say fun, fun, flirty, feminine. If those all kind of go together as like a vibe. Um, and actually, yeah, though, practical kind of does work. Cause I try to always, I can't stand when things aren't practical. So what does that mean to you? Um, makes sense is functional is versatile is comfortable is kind of works from one thing to the next and kind of lower maintenance not so you're thinking about clothes not about you no but also in general in life like I can't okay. stand if something requires I I need it to be like easy instructions I don't it needs to be self-explanatory or like um, but what is it about you that needs that what's the personality trait Oh gosh. I don't like when things are super comp- overcomplicated. I don't know. It's like a very clear cut, direct thing right. that I so, like when things are. So are you front. direct? Yes, I am direct. Okay. This so that probably that's... seems like I'm not direct since I'm like. No, no, no. So it totally does. Oh, it. no, but no, yeah, no. Direct it totally... would probably be the way to sum that up. Yeah. And I love that you just did this with me. Thank you. Because this Mm -hmm. for your listeners will be so valuable because they're going to struggle with this. And so hearing you struggle with this gives them 
freedom to struggle because it's not easy. Okay. So let's go over because I want to touch on your question. So you created and see if this fits who you are as a human being, bold, fun, flirty, feminine, and direct. Yeah. I feel like I am a lot of things, but those all feel me. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I mean, we're all a lot of things and they change, right? For sure. So just like our style changes and that's being aware enough to notice when you're changing because then your style will change. Okay. So now what you want to do is, so instantly when you say bold, fun, flirty, feminine, and direct, things start to come to mind. So if you were out shopping, what are some things that come to mind that you're going to look for just from these adjectives? Just from the adjectives? Um, probably bright colors. I was just going to say that that was the first thing that came to my mind was your first <laughs> thing is you're going to look for bright colors. Good. Yeah. Um, if like, if I see a bright jumpsuit or something, I'm like, yes. Like I'm yes. a big jumpsuit girl. Love it. Um, I also really, I'm a huge fabric girl. So for me, when I'm out shopping, I'm very much the one that touches everything in the store. Me too. Me too. So like, I don't know if this is direct. Maybe this is like the direct side of me, but I'm like, I don't have time for anything that's like scratchy or itchy. Yeah. And I like want it to feel exactly how I want it to feel right from the get go. (laughs) Yeah. And you know, you're probably also never going to buy anything that's like fussy. Oh, absolutely. Fussy. I don't own things that I have to iron. Exactly. Yeah. That's a hundred percent correct. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So that's why it's important to know who you are because then you can learn to work with it. Because it's already going on in the background. You're not making up who you are right now. This is already who you are. This is all true. Yeah. Right. So that's the work to do is figure out who you are and then look and see. And sometimes you can take it outside of you if it's too personal and say, okay, what would someone who's bold, fun, flirty, feminine, and direct wear? What would that look be? for them. And then sometimes that's a little easier to create, which is why I give the Pinterest board example, because then it's yeah. kind of not so personal because sometimes we get weird when it's about us. Right. <laughs> but if you could take it outside of you, you have more access to creating it. Yeah. Was that as evident? Yeah. I mean, I think so. It's as yeah. evident by you asking me and then me being like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, having an existential crisis behind the mic over here, but like, (laughs) no, but it's all, all checks out all true. I love that. Thanks. I really, I really appreciate you doing that with me because I know when you're the person running the show and on a podcast, it's sometimes not easy being vulnerable and being open and that yeah, that vulnerable. So you're amazing. That's That's what I have to say about you. You're, you're the real deal and you're amazing. (laughs) Guys, we had zero, we zero prepped for this. Clearly this was all like very (laughs) spontaneous. So (laughs) yeah, what you get. I love it. Um, Carrie and getting things wrapped up. I want to ask you what we ask everyone to close out thrive, which is what does thrive mean to you? And how do you strive to thrive in your own everyday life. It doesn't have to be style related. It can be like, yeah. Carry outside of style. Yeah. I, I think thrive for me means being my best self every single day. And that is something I thrive for. And I strive for every day. I was just on a walk this morning thinking about it. And I was like, if I can be, and this is my theory in life. If I can be better today than I was yesterday in all aspects of my life, that means a better mom, a better wife, a better um, boss, a better friend. But that is my goal. And sometimes I feel miserably, like we all do. We all and do. I think another part of Thrive for me is that I get back up and I notice my shortcomings and I become better. And that for me is what life's about, is becoming the best versions of ourselves every single day. 
I love that. Tell everybody where they can find you online to connect with you more. And of course, we'll put a link in the show notes for your style course also, awesome. which is called your curated style. Awesome. Um, so on Instagram, it's the style studio by KB. And then I also have a podcast called style your dreams. So fun. Um, and again, my mission is just to empower women. And then we have a YouTube channel and um, called the style studio by KB. So that's where you can find us. And if there's any way we can contribute to you, please send me a DM and let me know. And I'm happy to help. Wait, before you go, make sure you're subscribed to never miss an episode of Thrive. Drop five stars on your way out if you like what you just listened to and come join the party on Instagram at thrive.podcast to stay inspired and thriving all week long. Thanks for tuning in. It's your time to thrive.